let's let's start so good evening everyone and hope you all doing good so let's start with the day one of the regular session so we are going to start with the first model that is nothing but a python okay python first model okay so for that what is I it, is it uh, so, sorry sorry to interrupt is it demo session or like day one no it's a day one now oh we are okay we are done with them okay yeah okay so now uh, we are going to start with the python module what exactly is going to be there in the module right so the installation right or whatever the applications have been required we'll do it later on so first thing i'll try to explain python with an ide that is called as a colab okay so apart from colab we have python ide or you can call it as uh, pycharm or uh, Jupyter, right? There are local of uh, lots of ID that we can use it. A spider is also there, but I'm sorry, but then sorry. In this case, we are going to use an ID called as a collab. So, have you heard about the like, this ID called as a collab, which has been provided by Google? So here is the, it's a logo. So it's like it's look like uh, an infinity symbol. Here, it, uh, if I zoom in here a little bit, so you can see here it's like a CEO written which looks like an infinity but it is not an infinity c o that is google google colab so have you ever tried using google colab yes or no uh no is it similar to pycharm uh, it's a similar every uh ideas are similar to each other but the thing is that uh, the best part of using colab is that uh, you can access it from any any devices right if you install Python or you install PyCharm in Jupyter, uh, the drawback is that they are locally installed. You need a local ID, right? You are installing it on a system. Now, suppose you are at an interview and you want to uh, recall those things that what are the concepts or what are the codings, etc. So you need to have your system with you, right? So you always cannot open your system and you cannot just type on coding or you can just do some exercises on the uh, Python best thing is that colab gives you this flexibility and versatility that you can you log in to any of the devices what required is only your email id if you see over here there you can see my email id a google email id has been required you cannot use a redis mail or you cannot use a, a outlook only mandatory is an email id so you can just use an email id and then go to google colab okay so maybe I'll show you this. You go to Google and I hope my is so it's loading. The net is slow, I guess. So if you see the Google page appears, and in this Google page you just type on Colab. Okay, so this is what you have P O L A B Google Colab, or you just write Colab, whatever you want to write, and it will show you the page. So as you write. Will be seeing say it is saying welcome to cool collab, but do not put this option first option. Go to this one, which I said in the beginning that it should look like an infinity symbol, right? It's not an infinity symbol, but it stands for CEO. We click on that, okay. And as soon as we click on it, so what it will do is that it will navigate you to that page, a home page, default page of the Google Colab retreat. And here you will see that option, and you can see new notebook. So you just need to click on new notebook as you click on the new notebook this page will appear where is it got hold on this page will appear so which is like a home page of google colab and what you just need to do is that nothing else but for that my email id is always logged into the browser so if it has not been logged in so you just need to enter your email ID. It will definitely, it will by default ask you. No need to do any other exercises, or you do not have to stretch your nerves to do that. And after entering your email ID, it will take over here. As I said, what is the flexibility? The best part is that now suppose if I am uh, on a bed during the sleep hours, right? Maybe I go to bed around like 8 o'clock at night. And uh, before going to bed, what I want to do is that I want to utilize my 15, 20 minutes of time in recalling the things on a certain good learning right they say that the best practice is that you need to uh what do you say 
uh, read a book or read an article before going to bed you always need to have a habit of reading something so you can say that right right now we are into IT industry so instead of reading something you are very bored or monotonous or tedious so what you can do is that you can use your mobile like right, handset and you just need to type the same thing google collab and it will navigate you to the collab you yeah. log in with your email id and it will take you to the same page so this so whatever the coding you have done or whatever the programming you have done whatever you have done over here so it is easily accessible now imagine if i'm traveling i keep on traveling here and then now i want to do some kind of a coding but the problem is that you need an internet access if you want to do a coding right and if you are not having an internet access you can just go through the all the details like you can just scroll it whatever is that and you can find it but you cannot do a, a real-time execution because if you want to if you insert something data right at the input part and you want to generate an output you need an internet connectivity if you can see on my system uh here it is written it has written somewhere like a connect okay see it's like connect to a new runtime which actually connect if i uh, clicking over here it connects to the kernel level right which goes to the ias part if you have heard about the as a services there are three types of services uh paas iaas and saas right so this is like an saas service like software as a service where we don't download the software but without downloading the software we can still use uh the uh platform it's like uh now i will talk about pycharm or uh, jupiter so where you have to download that software on a system and then you're able to access like it's not a saas service saas means what software as a service where you can use on a real time without downloading it for example best example is like uh, this right now what we are using go to application so you don't have to download an application you are using an api and it is an application programming interface which is uh, in the form of https okay a link so you just click on that link it will take you to that particular page and you are just able to access those services that is what you're just clicking on that link and it brings you here and you're watching the session so you're joining the session that's it it's like an api call this okay haven't said so google collab uh, is a platform it's available over a web you don't have to download and uh, you can access it from any device and every uh, place etc so that is what i mostly say say i mostly try to recommend as that before going to sleep or you're very much bored and you cannot you don't want to open your laptop system because we are humans right? get tired so, uh, like before going to the bed i don't want i don't feel opening laptop or my ipad so what i do is that you now i just go to the mobile right i use my phone and i just go to google cola and some programming i do right if i'm on traveling mode etc so i just keep on doing the uh, you know programming or some kind of uh, stuff like that so that is the best part of using a cola and i always suggest or recommend my students to use a cola because it's a very good uh what is again application you can use it anywhere anytime even if you're wherever you're at cafes you're at restaurants wherever you want you feel like doing a coding you just uh, use your mobile because you cannot keep mobile out of your uh it's always there in the pocket it is always there in your hand a normal uh psychologist says that uh, uh, there is a study that a human touches his or her phone at least 120 times a day but it's an old study i would say it's like more than thousand times 120 is like the normal number even i touch my phone a lot of times uh, even though it's uh, not not required i just keep looking at the time etc but uh, okay fair enough okay got it uh Vipula. Uh, why we are using this uh, platform called as a collab because it is easily accessible wherever you want and uh, you can just use it right you don't have to open your laptop or systems to do that coding clear i guess uh, satish and vasu yeah, are using collab right? because yeah. see you, you don't you have 24 hours right do not miss out on any opportunity to do the coding as i said i go to the back i also don't feel that, but if i feel like someday out of seven days even if you're trying to press three days that 15 minutes even it is 45 minutes that 45 minutes are very valuable because you're going to sleep and uh, it's been heard or been, there is a survey i don't know i am not much into psychology but they said before going to bed if you read something and that is uh, manifest your brain and it is there that remains in your mind for a long period of time so before going to bed i always make sure that at least i send uh, spend 10 minutes of uh, reading or doing some kind of an activity i don't watch mobile before because i want to manifest that thing whatever is valuable okay all right so i uh, hold uh, you have got the uh, steps 
uh, how do you reach to this place? Uh, how do you reach to this page? Sorry, not place. Clear? Is it clear? How do you do that? Just go to Google. It's the world's uh, biggest search engine. Write in Google Colab and you can see on the symbol. This symbol should be the first option should not be clicked, which is showing the symbol of Google. And then you just need to click, click on new notebook. If it is logged in already or logged in with the email ID, so it will dev, definitely fetch by default that email ID. And uh, if it is not been logged in, it will be asking your dialog box. It will show your dialog box and it will ask you, please enter your credentials. You just uh, log in into credentials and that's it. It's, you're good to go. So you'll be navigated by directly. Uh, you'll now will, it will navigate you directly to this uh, home page and you can start using and start writing the code. That's it. Clear? Everyone? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, more over to it. Uh, if you are still unclear, what you do is that you do start, you do it on your own, and you get stuck somewhere. You let me know. Okay. Let's start with the first thing. Uh, what is Python? So, first thing you need to never forget this one principle, and this is the opening line. Python is an interpreter language. Never forget this thing. Interpret I in very new and poor in English, or I don't know. It's called at English or English. So I'm very poor. I don't know what is the spelling of interpreter. So help me. What is the spelling of interpreter? Inter. Yeah. Is it correct? I don't know. It's Google is not providing an intelligence as well. I hope it is correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So it's an interpreter language. So what is the meaning of interpreter? So now um, I simplify it. Now suppose I am in any of the European countries, right? except great britain so uh, suppose i am in a country called spain right and uh, the native language of those people are uh spanish right? is spaniel or you're in germany so it's a german one so now i want to deliver the trainings uh, to those students right and then the language is spanish right even though if they know uh, english that's an advantage but i it's our consideration to explain this term called as an interpreter now what happens is that I don't speak Spanish and they don't speak English. Now, what is the solution? Right? How do I teach them the Python or data science or data analytics, whatever we want to teach? Now, what is the solution? What I'll do is that I'll try to hire a mediator, an interpreter, right? We call it an inter interpreter or mediator. So what this person is, this person is known to the terms or terminology or has a sound knowledge of a Spanish language and English language. Right, this person knows both the language and he's good at this uh, particular programming as well. Because when he to speak, so he has to translate everything, and he are, he also needs to know what exactly those things are, right? Whatever if I'm trying to explain the syntax, uh, the code, etc. So I'll hire a mediator. So I'll try to speak in English as like I'm trying to speak right now. So the person will keenly listen what I'm trying to explain. He will listen and he will translate the same thing into the spanish language so the students who are attending the session will understand what exactly i'm trying to say and addition to it if the students have any questions the what they'll do is that they'll speak in spanish this guy will understand and again translate back to me in english language right and this is how the entire things go on right so here also when you are trying to talk about python language the language we are going to use is a natural language right natural language means what whatever we are typing right so if i want to type like, hello world right hello world or if i want to do add addition e plus uh, or we can plus sorry pi plus uh, 10 right so this is a natural language which we human understand it's called a natural language right so when you try to connect with an computer right so here we are trying to compute uh, connect with the uh, machines right that is a um, computer so computers don't understand uh, the text language or they don't understand natural language they don't understand images they don't understand audio video the only language uh, the computer since the origin of the computers right the development of the computer the language which computer understand is a numeric language right which is in the form of binary 010101 apart from that Till now, which is we are living in 2024, computer has not been changed to the language. It's the only language that it understands that is the numeric language. Since the origin, I say, right? The things are moved at a very fast pace, but the language has not been changed, which computer understands. Neither your computer 
not my not intel not ibm cognizant accenture no computer understand any other language apart from the binary language or we call it as a numeric language now what happens is that now i'm trying to type something right and i expect to generate an output right i'm writing a code or syntax and i'm expecting the computer to generate me an output right so now as i said in the realistic example now i need a mediator right oh, i'm trying to speak in english to the students and this mediator is trying to convert that into the spanish so that students understand and students are giving me an output maybe it's a, like a feedback or it's a questionnaire or whatever they're trying to give me a feedback so i can understand if they're able to understand if they are having a doubt or question etc so similar fashion if i'm trying to pass an input the machine's duty is what to generate an output right that is what we are, if you are building an application right so definitely the machine should give me an output if it is not giving me an output then what is the point of doing an building an application or trying to generate an uh, dashboards etc so now when i try to pass this thing right in the natural language this will interact with the machine right so suppose if i just use an arrow and i try to say interaction with the machine right where here here machine is nothing but your cpu right it's a, like a central processing unit which is the brain of your machine right because whenever you're trying to learn something right here now right now you're learning something your brain is the only organ that is trying to understand the thing right neither heart neither liver a lot of organs every organ is very important and vital but only pivotal organ which will understand anything is your brain so it's like a brain right cpu and uh, that is why i asked you which is your brain it's i5 i7 so the better your processor the better its uh, understanding right so it's like an iq level if you talk about generation my grandfather uh, didn't knew how to use mobile my father knew how to use my uh, mobile i uh, uh, smartly used a mobile now uh, may, my nephew or uh, niece they use mobile like anything they play like a toy they tell teach me okay see uh, mama this is <laughs> <laughs> you need to unlock uh, through the face recognition etc they teach me artificial intelligence so this is what it depends upon the generation that is the same thing so if you try to do a competition on intel uh, pentium so it will definitely not give an output so if i5 is there it will perform very good uh, competition if it is i7 it will perform much more better and if it is i3 it will compare to i5 it is doing a lot less uh, competition competition is nothing but a calculation okay so now i said hello world so now this will go to the machine right which we have right now the uh, cpu right we don't have a gpu right nvidia is the one who's providing uh, computational power with a uh, with a very lesser price it's now cheaply available that is why artificial intelligence is in a boom right now so now it goes to this it will try to understand what exactly we try to do and it will understand okay hello world is like something like zero one one i don't know what exactly it is uh, the more back at the back end and not into the that processor file eight eight six or eight uh, eight zero eight six we call it as and this has been translated okay then it understand okay zero one and then when we try to generate an output right with the help of a particular methods and function so how do you generate an output so i'll put it into the print function so if you have seen a study if i want to generate a hello world so we just line a single line of a code hello world so now this hello world goes into the machine machine will translate into the binary code right now it has understood okay now it is expecting what is the function you're trying to do we are expecting it to print so now this binary language will again be translated with the help of python here also it is required python see hello world has been translated with the help of python i'll write here python which goes to the cpu right and it translates into zero one again when you're trying to expect the output right it has been converted into input it is understanding the what it is trying to do and we are expecting it to print so again this binary language will be converted with the help of python language right now this is what it has reached the spanish people right the spanish people are again telling me if they have understood or not or if they are giving a feedback that mediator it is coming back so again mediator now this python has converted that binary form whatever this final form is there back into the hello world because that is what we are expecting in the print function okay let's try to understand the uh, flow or we can say uh, flow chart then it will print again hello world and this will be shown on the output that is hello world because this is what we are trying to understand this is what we will understand if this output is not hello world but if it is something like 1100 or 011100 so you tell me what is it 
you're trying to understand. It's not a Morse code. You will not understand what is this because how many binary codes you're going to remember. This is for hello world. So tomorrow, if I type something like welcome, imagine I type something like welcome. Welcome, right? So again, welcome binary code will be different. It will not be the same one. So Python will pass, interact with machine, and it will try to convert into the binary language, right? Python will take it with the help of in natural language, right? And then machine will convert into binary code. So maybe it is like one one zero 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 one 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 right again you want an output so python will convert that into welcome right so if it is printing welcome it is okay but if it has printed something like same one which is binary code if i copy this so how many binary codes you are going to remember imagine if you have learned from a junior kid or maybe you have learned a english language you have learned a hindi language you have learned marathi language so that is what you're trying to understand and if you start learning binary language, how many words you're going to remember? So you have to learn A, B, C, D first, right? That is what is zero, one, one, zero, etc. Then you have to understand, okay, what words means what? It's like an embedding thing, right? It is converting of that text into the numeric form. It is by done with the help of CPU. It is an embedding part. So you cannot remember. What is the language you remember is a natural language. And that is why to convert that natural language into the binary language or call it the numeric language. And again, retranslate that numeric language into the uh, original form this is done with the help of python and that is why we require any programming language we talk about java you talk about c we talk about any languages that language acts like a mediator it's like a mediator whom i have hired i speak in english he understand he translate in spain spanish german scandinavian language whichever language you want people there answer something or say something he'll understand and again he translate back to, to english this is what we're trying to do that okay so this is what python does so python is an interpreter language which is why required so this is what it tries to do it can translate the natural language and pass it to the cpu which will convert into the numeric language it will understand what exactly we're trying to do again we were expecting output and again it will translate back to python python will decode that part into the natural language and it will show me an output instead of binary language it will say welcome but this is what we'll understand now got it why we are using python and what is python and what is the meaning of this interpreter language yes or no so in simpler word if i try to put it into one line so interpreter language is nothing like it is trying to translate from one form of a language to another and vice versa clear is it clear or still unclear yes clear sir Great. And uh, right nowadays, uh, you, you see a lot of movies that have been translated, right? Now, suppose I, as I said, I don't understand English. I am very poor at English. So now I want to watch Hollywood movies, right? A web series which are available on OTT platforms. So what I do is that mm, I don't understand English. So what I do is that I translate them into Hindi, right? I try to watch. Nowadays, there are a lot of dub movies uh, that are coming, which are from the South India, right? These have been uh, uh, released on uh, Hindi language, right, which we understand, or different languages. Now you tell me when you're watching a movie, a dubbed movie, a Hollywood movie which is in into Hindi, or maybe a South movie which is dubbed into Hindi. So you tell me the translation is done uh, dialogue by dialogue, that is line by line, or you think that if there is a scene like uh, they want to say something like, uh, what do you say? Uh, this property belongs to me, right? There's a line which they're saying this property belongs to me. And it has to be delivered at that dialogue, right? Wherever the scene is there. If that dialogue has been delivered at the end, right? So do you think that the, there's a right uh, dubbing or is it a right translation of the particular language? What do you think? If it is exact translation, right? Whatever is required for the particular dialogue. If it is done right translation, will you be able to understand movie or it is like a synchronized way like wherever you're putting any dialogues or you're trying to understand any dialogues you, you just have to do a lot of brain exercise to understand okay which dialogue matches where so what is the best scenario you will try to watch your movies if it is like a dialogue by translation or maybe whatever has been seen in english like okay this property belongs to me and hindi at that line only wherever there's, there's a scene a screenplay going on and that exact dialogue has been translated in Hindi and wo kehta hai ki yaar, ye mujhe belong karti hai, aur ye jayadat, uh, meri hai aise. So what do you think? Exactly dialogue by dialogue translation is fine or you can just put any dialogues anywhere? 
right if it is a dialogue by dialogue line by line translation then it's a good part right so it's the same thing what i'm trying to do is that interpreter language means what it's a line by line translation so that means what there are two types of languages compile based and interpreter what is that compile based and interpreter compile based means what uh, you have worked on which programming language which of the program language okay i want to know i forgot my uh, bad so you uh, what is the satish and vasu you guys are friends so you have worked somewhere in the industry the real time experience no sir i did not work. i don't have any experience any of them right you have done a post graduation maybe after completing your education in, in internship or maybe a year experience and then you flew away to where you have lived i forgot a western part of the country i guess world right so, any experience but at least a year six months internship anything no sir to be honest yeah no sir really we tried but we didn't get anything right? it's uh, hard to get here okay vasu and vasati should keep sitting on a different different uh, rooms that is why they see <laughs> cool. we are sitting next to each other all right great not a problem uh vipula have you uh, done any experience in the coding any of the programming language so because the answer lies within the question yeah i have experience in python uh, i am from computer science background so i have experience i mean like i was i studied c language everything all that sort uh, but i okay. have work, work experience on uh, little work experience not much on the python uh okay, i can okay, understand great. how the code goes and everything like the loops by loops everything like that okay right now you're working on i forgot you're working on which programming language you're working as what uh so um, i have experience on informatica power center for uh, uh 10 years but i got a break uh, due to some reasons so i'm on a break okay. right now so i'm working on new skills to improve and then um, um go back to work okay great so right now you're on a break right so you're not yes. working anywhere right yes but i have experience great. on uh, um uh like uh, uh different projects uh, on power center um so i know sql and a little bit of python and unix okay you worked on uh unix yes yes so okay. uh, yeah all right all right so this uh, you must be having a good idea about the cloud services yeah, uh, yeah. I was referring to different documents. Like, um, yeah. Uh, Azure. Have you worked about much, any time on Azure little. or this uh, component? Okay, all right. No, then just asking. Okay, anyway, that was not a part of question. Okay, as I asked you, like uh, uh, this part, or whatever. Why I asked you? Because if you have seen yesterday's slide, right? There was a C language or C plus plus or Java. I'll not uh, deep dive into much of the languages because the uh, more important we need to focus or we need to emphasize on is the Python. So what's relative example? So you talk about C, C plus or Java. Those are all compile based language, right? What does compile based language? Imagine if you're trying to write an application like Uber, right? So what does this Uber application does is that it finds you the nearest cab available, right? You can book it, you can just uh, take it, and you can just uh, uh, drive it to your destination. You don't have to drive. You have a driver, right? You just sit into the cab, and it, it will take you to the destination, right? Now, what is compile-based? I'll tell you on what is uh, uh, this interpreter language. So now you have written an application for an Uber, right? Which uh, is around like 50,000 or maybe 40,000 line of code, right? So you tell me how huge this lines of code are, right? Imagine, imagine it's like a 10,000 line of code. Now, this language written in any of the languages, imagine C or maybe Java, right? Now they are using a curly braces, right? And you start debugging it. And it takes some time, right? It depends upon your computational, computational speed, right? Imagine even if it is taking five minutes. So after 10 minutes of your five minutes of your debugging, it will give an error. There is a curly braces missing. So you okay, you try to find out where is it. Okay, you try to resolve it. Okay, again you debug it. So now again it takes five minutes. So again it finds okay, semicomma missing. 
some parent preferred machine. So it's like a minimal error, right? It's not a logic error. If it is a logic error, you can understand, okay, I have some a wrong code or syntax or something. It's like minimum error. It's like a curly process. That is not even an error. Now imagine how frustrated you'll be because if it is showing such kind of an error, semi-common missing, parenthesis missing, like 10 times, 20 times, right? Every time you have to run a code. I'm just talking about it depends upon computation power. It's like five minutes. But in the real time, it might even require half hour, maybe one hour. Uh, every one hour, you cannot spend time on running the debugging of the code just because of the semi-common missing. You don't have that much of patience to be an Thomas Alva Edison to invent electricity, electric bulb, right? We don't, we lose patience even after our, our uh, Netflix or our Amazon Prime starts buffering. I also get annoyed, right? I feel like I'm having a very slow speed internet, right? Then I disconnect the internet of the rest of the family members just because I want to enjoy the entertainment. Okay. All right. That is just a sarcasm. Okay. Then what you do is that now imagine the same line of a code you have written in a Python, right? A Python is not a compile based language. Compile based means what? It will uh, run the entire line of a code starting from index zero till n number. And after running a code, it will tell you if it is going to generate an output or an error. So imagine now after every half an hour, it is just showing an error, a small error. But if I try to write the same line of code in Python, so what is Python trying to do is that Python is an interpreter language. So as I asked you the question, if you're trying to understand the dialogue line by line, then you'll understand what exactly the movie is, what is happening in the movie, right? Whatever the dialogues have been there, it should be denoted at that same point only. So now when you try to write a coding, right? So if I try to write here somewhere in this new cell, so how do you generate a new cell? You see here code. So you click on that code, it will take you to the new cell. And what I'll try to do is that I'll write a code to try to explain you what is Python interpretive language, right? It's not a compile based language. So I'll say print. And I'll say hello world. Okay. Hello world. And I'll just copy it. I'll paste it. Okay, I've written a file lines of a code. So this is when a Gemini is there installed. By default, you can see what you know the, you know what is Gemini? Have you ever heard about the word called the Gemini? Yes or no? You can see on my screen there's a maybe in your pool app is also it is there. It is now recently installed. It is pre installed. Uh, previously, it was not that till last year, 2023. Heard about Gemini, yes or no? Uh, yes. Okay. Heard about Chat GPT? Yeah. 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 So, Chat GPT is an application developed by OpenAI. And this Gemini is a Chat GPT, you can say, which is developed by Google. So, this is the Google Waloka. So ye kya it tries to create a content on understanding. It's like a human intelligence. It's like a, a human brain or chat what which tries to understand what you're trying to do. So agar taking So as I try to write, so it is trying to understand, figure out what exactly I'm trying to write. But ye se figure out kar right? Because there are a lot of files available already on my Google Drive. So it is trying to understand ki agar aise kuch likha hai, manage, so it is trying to understand okay, ye shayad, Sangram jo hai, hello world, let me go shish kar, right? So that is why it is giving me a, a suggestion. And then what I do need to do is that I just need to, I'll show you, I'll so you just need to click on tab. So it automatically fetch me. It's like a chat GPT. So I'll just click on tab. That is a Gemini. It's the name of that application. It's a good thing. AI is uh, going to rule the world. You need AI developers. IT or culture is very good. Or experience lay log in so you will not have a package less than 50 units. So look, anyways, uh, let's uh, get a job of 15,000 first. So, uh, this is what I said 50. So, this is print hello world. I'm trying to explain you that interpreter language. So, Python, you understand Hindi? How much do you understand Hindi? Like, out, out of, on a scale of five, Hindi, how do you understand Hindi? So I I don't understand much. So you can speak. Can you speak in English? Sirvik, how much you understand? Two, three. If you don't speak, it's okay. Uh, I know I can understand. understand. I can understand few lines, but um, for me, English is more comfortable. Okay, Vasu and Satish. Hyderabad, India, sir. 
Oh, Hyderabad. So, how much? But you rate on scale of 5, 2, 3, 2.5? 3, 4. 3, 4. 3, 2, 4. 3, 2, 4. Okay, great. Vasu. Uh, why I was saying is that uh, sometimes I don't know that word. So, then that is what I'll do is that I can use that uh, whatever the Hindi language words are there. So, to make you understand, right? Because I yeah, yeah, don't I can trust understand. Hindi. Okay. It's not that I'll speak English only, the majority part. But if I don't know the words, so sometimes I'll use it. So if you still don't understand, I'll try to translate back in English one thing. Okay. Tell you. So now the point is that now it's an interpreter language, right? So what it will try to do is that it will not try to compile entire block of code. Suppose this is like a pile line of code. If you try to understand the same example, it's like a 10,000 line of code. So what this Python does is that wherever it finds an error, right? So it will not compile all that 10,000 lines of code and then give you an output. Instead of that, what it has done is that it's like an interpreter language, line by line. So first line it will check, it will run the line of code, it will check the first line of your code, it's like a debugging. It will see if it is going to generate an output or not. If it is going to generate an output, it will generate an output called as a hello world because print statement is used to print whatever you have written inside it. Okay, so just try to understand how it is working. So slowly, slowly we'll see what is that quotation, what is the print end, etc. Now it will go to second line of code, it will see that, okay, there are two case, cases, use case, uh, sorry, cases. Either it will generate an output or it will generate an error, right? That is the only two cases. One of them, it will definitely occur. Either it will generate an output or it will generate an error. It will say, check in the second case, okay, I am going to, I am able to generate an output or an error. So it, in this case, it will generate an output, okay? And in this third case, suppose it finds that, okay, in this case, I am not able to generate an output, okay? If I run this code, shift enter, so it will say, okay, first two lines, if you see here, first two lines, the output are generated. See how? Hello world, hello world. Why? Because it checked first line of a code and it said that, okay, I can generate an output. So first line, it generated an output. Second line also, it said that, okay, I am able to generate an output. So it generated an output. Now third case, what happened is that it said that the, I cannot generate an output. The second came, case come into the plane, that is, I will able to generate an error. So that is why it is saying now error is generated. Now imagine if this was a 10,000 line of a code, 10,000, right? And error was at third line, third line, right? So if it is taking half an hour to run that entire block of statements just because of your quotes are missing, semi-comma, so half frustration. Now imagine this error has been identified within three seconds. Suppose it took one second for this line of a code, one line to this line of code and then third second. So imagine how time saving it is. If you have learned data structure, in data structure, there are two things that is always been taught. That is the time complexity and space complexity. That is why data structure is very important part. If you have learned data structure, then you, you'll understand how important it is in the uh, organization or in the IT industry because you need to reduce the time complexity and the space complexity. Now, in this case, what you're trying to reduce is the time complexity because on the third second, it tells there's an error. And what Python says is that unless and until you don't fix this error, I am not going to go ahead. Rest, whatever the lines of code are done, maybe 9,000. 998 lines of code are still correct it says i will not go ahead unless until you fix this error so what you need to do is that you need to fix error so within three seconds it tells now you just fix an error so maybe somewhere here again there is an error okay some here there's an error suppose for example okay. and now you run it again okay. so now first line it will generate an output it is correct second is correct third is correct and four is correct so it printed four hello world see one two three and four now on the fifth line it is showing an error so that is saying i'm not going to print anything see after four even though this line is correct right no matter how many lines i have suppose if i have one two three more lines right but still it says you first fix that existing error then and then only i'll go ahead no matter even if there are errors or if there are no errors i still will proceed unless it, until you don't fix the existing error that is what it is trying to reduce the time complexity how much time it is trying to uh, uh what do you say what uh, save so imagine within that half an hour where you are trying to take half an hour to run one line of one only one epoch or you can say one iteration and you have to do 10 iteration means what you if you start by 10 o'clock maybe it will be lunch hour and still you'll be solving resolving errors only but in this case see imagine in 10 minutes or 20 minutes only 
where you go find an error okay it's saying okay it is also showing you the line number so it is saying okay fifth line you just go to that fifth line and okay okay find where it is fifth line and just say it, okay try to resolve the errors how quickly it is solving so that is why python has become so popular among the users that it is trying to save some time and it is trying to do everything so what is that error let's okay. resolve it so now see when the issue is resolved so now it is printing so now what is the meaning of interpreter language that means what it does a line by line translation it is not from file based language so this is very important to remember compile based means what it will just execute that all the line of a code and after that it will decide okay there is an error or not but python in that case it doesn't do that that thing it will do line by line translation it will check okay if it is able to generate an output it will generate and if it is not able to generate an output it will ask the developer to first fix that error if you are able to fix that error then and then only it will go ahead till then it will not go ahead so that is the best part because it is trying to reduce the time complexity clear got it what is python interpreter language and how it is a, a, not a compile based language how it is trying to compile how it is trying to generate an output is it clear till here uh yeah so you are saying that uh, c or c plus plus you will write the code in the file uh, and then you give it the code to the compiler to check for the errors but in the uh, uh, python uh, when you are uh, writing the code itself it gives us the suggestions and then uh, if the if there is an error, any error it gives us is that correct understanding yes 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 it will not it will not uh compile entire block of code it will not compile it will just compile a particular line this first line first line it will check is it able to generate an output or error so if it is generate an, it is able to generate an output it will give an output then it will go to second line it's like a same translation of a uh, dialogues line by line then third dialogue and fourth dialogue so this is what it is trying to do a line by line translation get your point instead of checking the entire block of code it is trying to line. so whenever it finds an error Stop its I will ask the developers to post it again. Clear? Compilation means for it will try to compile all that block of code first and then decide what we have to do. Okay. Got yes, it sir. clear now? What is compiler and what is interpreter? That is why it is popular, right? Because you need to reduce the time, you need to get an output. Because 10,000 line of a code you are generating, it, every time you are trying to send it to your processor, the processor is generating output and just as a million or error, how much uh, uh, power it will try, try to require. So a lot of power is required. Right? And it, in the companies, your project is not the only project that has been working, right? You'll have only one server, right? Or only one computation of power. So a lot of projects simultaneously have been working, right? So maybe 10 projects, 20 projects, 100 projects, right? So you need to work right because if there are three four products that are coming coming to that cpu right whatever the company has hired well it will definitely take time now because it's like a batch processing first your project is there if it is already some other projects are there so it will complete that processing first then it will go to your project then it will go to the next project it's like a stack and queue if you have learned right if you know what stack and key how it is been used that is what it does the same process and then it is going to get output but if you are using an interpreter language, it's very easy. Within half an hour or maybe within one hour, you'll find out, debug all the errors and fix those errors. Okay, clear? So this is how they try to do an interpreter. This is what Python tries to do. Is it clear till here? Yeah, good. So now coming to the next topic, let's see what are variables in Python. What are variables? So, what do you think? What is a variable? So, I forgot to write a date. Uh, what is the date today? Uh, any, uh, to store the data that you um, have a memory and create it and then store it there. Defining. Yeah, great. Perfect. Huh. Tell me. Store the value. Yeah, yeah, it's storing any value. Okay, storing any value. Okay. Anyone else apart from Vipula? What answers you have? And uh you just try to craft uh, your own words. I don't want that. Uh, you need to have a perfect uh, the bookcase line of an answer. 
just uh, you put it in your own words and try to explain however you want to just i want to see what you know about it that's it what are the variables do you think okay now imagine uh there are like uh what you can see hold on let's see if i can want to show you something on a page i'm very bad at drawing as well so but i'll try to draw something very beautiful that we will understand that will make you very much clear about the variables whatever you given an answer whatever is there in your mind is also correct so suppose uh, uh, there are few set of people standing over here right? if you are able to see my pain okay and there are few people standing over here suppose one is there two is there right there are few people like you be five to seven people are there right so i'll write over here five people okay and suppose i am standing over here suppose my name is a and i'm standing with my friend called as a b all right what i'm trying to do is that i'm here my name is a and this is my friend b we are standing and trying to have a conversation and there are some people who were standing here right now what i try to do is that i see there's a friend of mine i no have a look at these people who are standing over here and i find that this person who is at the fourth position is one of my known friend okay one of my known friend so what i do is that i say to mr b right look at this person he is my friend what i'm trying to do is that i'm just saying to mr b look at here look here is my friend so now this b is trying to look at all those five people all those five people and trying to understand what mr a is saying that what i am trying to say which of those five people is his friend so b is very unclear he has no clue that which among those five friends is he talking about again i say okay did you see my friend i see this is my friend so b again uh, that who is this fr his friend right so then b asks uh, a i can see there are five people so i am not unable to understand whom you are talking about because i have never met your friend so now what i'll try to do is that i will use my finger like maybe this like thing i am using a pointer and i'll say look b this fourth position person this person i'm pointing right with help of my finger i'm pointing at this towards fourth person and i'm also saying this look at the name i'm calling that number fourth person this person pointing with the help of gestures and telling the number this is my friend maybe his name is x now this b is very much clear to understand okay you are talking about this guy this fella now he understand okay this is whom you are talking about among those five people so variables are nothing but it's like a name that you are giving to store a particular value right so whenever you want to utilize a value so what you can do is that instead of using that value all the time you can just use the name or you can use a variable and automatically what will happen is that that value will be used Now is it clear what is variable? So variables are nothing but a name that holds a particular value. Now suppose if there are three students in the class, and I ask, did you guys? Okay, I just said, did you understand? Right, I said, did you understand? So among there are three students, is it clear for you that whom am I asking? So Satish will be saying, uh, sir, I don't know whom you are asking. Vasu will be looking at Satish and say, sir, sir, who is he talking to? And Vipula will also say, I, maybe the, the, he's asking to the rest of the two guys because I said, did you understand? Right. So you guys are unclear that whom I am I asking. But if I say, okay, Satish, you understood. So now Vasu and Vipula is very much clear. Okay, I am making it very precise by calling Satish. So like it's an identity, right? It's a name that through which you are make very much. The sentence become clear that what exactly I'm trying to say through the particular sentence is it clear? So variables are nothing but a name that makes it very much clear and precise about a particular value. So when you are trying to use a particular value, values are nothing but the data types, right? Whatever the data you are trying to say, right? That data is being hold or been stored into a variable 
and that variables right or called as a name you can give it as a name and that it can be used for the further calculation if you want to use the calculation if i require in some in my value of m i can just use variable and that variable has a certain calculation or certain uh, operations on it so that variable will when it is been called so it will perform the same operation at that particular line of a code as well so variables are nothing but uh, holds a particular operations functions or a data which can be used for the pro for the processing clear what is name so variables so variables are nothing but name right so it's like the same thing right if i want to call you but i cannot use a pronoun if i say he understood right so it is very much unclear when i make use your name so it is very much clear to understand who am i talking about okay so that's the same thing so variables what we use right so there are two ways to do the variables so one is called as a define of variable that is called as a definition and second is called as a initialization initialization is it the correct spelling or not i don't know okay chalo so if i say x right and if i say is equal to 10 now whatever is there see gemini is giving me an entry maybe it is trying to fetch it from somewhere else um, because i have a lot of uh, files on my disk drive anyway that's it there so now this 10 is nothing but a value so remember how do you declare a variable right how you define a variable you can say so you just write a variable name if i zoom in a little bit so you'll say whatever you written on the left hand side is called as a variable name and whatever you write with the help of equal to right on the right hand side those are called as a values those are called as a variable so you are trying to hold this value into a particular name so that whatever you want to use 10 so instead of you writing 10 all the time that is a static value you can call this variable x and what it will do is that automatically the nature of this python variable is that it will fetch the value called as a 10 similarly if i try to use a variable called y so automatically this 20 will be called all right so as i say vasu So automatically, Vasu is the one who is going to unmute and say something. If I say Vipula, it is going to be Vipula who is always going to unmute and say something. So it's like the same thing. When I call your name, so you are trying to do certain operations. So that is not that values are been fetched or used instead of using the static values, right? Clear? What is defining means what? Defining means what? Just writing a variable name. That is called as defining. And when you assign a value, so for example, if I say two hundred, this is called the initialization of a variable. So defining a variable. just writing a name like like x and when i say x is equal to something like 200 or 2000 this is called as initialization of variable so defining just writing the variable name and when you try to assign a value it becomes an initialization clear till here okay yeah okay so now श्याम और Jupiter, right? So or Colab, right? They are specially designed and developed for the Python language, where you don't need to install the package because if Python is a language, it is also called as a package, right? But it is already pre-installed or it comes by default uh, uh, integration with the Python language, so you don't have to use uh, any utility to install it. Utility is like a what do you say? Settings when you need to install. It's like a pip. it is a utility which has been provided by so any of the packages you use an utility uh, called as a pip and then you write the name of that package it get installed but you don't need in the case of python or sorry in the case of a spider pycharm or jupyter or colab okay it is pre installed clear so that is for python uh, it's an interpreter language uh, and what is interpreter and compile based language i hope it is clear and um, After that, we try to see what is variable, how we define a variable, and how do you initialize a variable. 
clear. Now, what are the rules uh, to declare a variable? We'll see tomorrow. And one more thing before we put, uh, call it a day. So you just go through one uh, word called as a pep eight. Pep eight. So heard about pep eight? No. Yeah. No. So if you go to Google and if you try to type pep it, I guarantee you this will be the question that will be an asked in interview. When I gave an interview for the first time, I'll tell you this was the only question that was been asked. Uh, it was like four, three, four people in the uh, room. It's, uh, it's a very long back story. And they asked this question called the pep it, right? So out of this four people, I gave this answer and uh, uh, fortunate enough that I got selected because of this one question and the rest of the three said just like you said no I don't know you need to understand the whole and soul of anything right in terms of trying to do multiple things Pepet is not in nothing but it's like a guidelines or you can say a rule book that how do you write a syntax sorry how do you write a code in the Python language uh, to modify it, I can say, right, if you know how to drive a car or how do you ride a bike. So if you want to get a license, uh, so you need to know the rules, how to ride a uh, bike or how do you drive a car, right? If you see a red signal, that means what you need to stop, right? When you see a green signal, you can leave. If you want to go right, you can either take a hand out or you can just uh, turn on the right side indicator, right? It's like the same thing. If you see some of, someone is trying to cross a road, or someone comes in front of you, you need to apply a brakes. Whatever, that means what if you want to drive a car on the roads, you need to know the rules of a driving, right? If you see, you go to any of the driving school, you'll see that a lot of the signals are there, symbols are there, etc. That is what if you go to the during the license that examination, that uh, that officer will ask you to turn indicator if you want to go right, etc. Whatever, that's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's like a rule book. So if you want to write a code on the Python platform, right, Colab or uh, Jupyter or any of the platform. It's the same thing unless and until you do not follow these uh, rules, right? If I try to break the red signal, right, and if there is an officer, so what will happen? So definitely he'll ask me to take my car uh, aside and he'll charge me, like it's like a penalty I need to pay, right, the fine, right, because I broke the rule. It's the same thing here. You don't have to pay any fine, but the thing is that it, the, it will show an error. It is saying that you are trying to go out of this uh, rule book. That is what it has been stated in this paper. Paper is the name of that. What is the full form? It's an abbreviation or it is an acronym. The full form is Python Enchantment Proposal or I call it an enhancement. Exactly. It's like proper pronunciation is enhancement. So Python Enhancement Proposal, which is called as a PEP in short. So it's eight is nothing but it's a name just given. So this is what PEP it stands for. It's like a guideline or a rule book that within this rule only you can write a code in Python. Right? It's like a, if I try to use variable, right? So so that is the same thing it's like a documentation which is a rule book as i said if you want to drive a car or ride a bike to get a license you need to know the rules so if you're going to write in python uh the code so you need to know the rules so you can just go through it it's like a reference even if you don't go don't worry we are going to do the coding within the rules only because even if i try to break the rules python will not allow me because it's a it's a program right so program will just follow the command which has been given by the master right whoever is still whoever is trying to now take care of this python so whatever the rule is there under that master will not make any changes it will we are the consumers right we are the followers we will cannot use it right so guido van rosen who is the founder or the father of this python language he himself has wrote these rules he was the founder in 1991, he has uh, uh, started that programming language. It took four years to build. In 1994, the first uh, was the edition was released. And this book was created in 2001. So, this is what you go through it. Uh, this question is what is that? It is not 
rule for uh, in Python for writing a code in Python. So everything. Even if you don't follow, we are going to do within that only thing. How do you declare a variable so you can see global variable type variable? How do you write a function, etc. Yeah. So you just go through it. Uh, it's an important part. So this can be asked in the interview what is perfect. At least for your reference, you need to know. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Okay, let's okay. We'll call it a day. Uh, tomorrow, uh, just a slight change. Uh, just for tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll have a session at seven thirty instead of seven. Just for tomorrow, there's also some reason with that. So is it okay? Just for tomorrow, if you have it yeah. at seven thirty. Okay, I need your cooperation. All right, then we'll catch up at seven thirty tomorrow. Yeah. All right, then. Okay. Tell you. All right. So let's call it a day now and let's meet tomorrow. Try to practice whatever you're done. Whatever. Uh, uh, I... Uh, yeah, I have a little concern with the timing. Uh, uh, I will talk offline. I'll talk offline. Is it possible like to ship the okay, time? All right. uh, no, ma'am. But I I might need I need to have a time, right? So I don't have any other time. This is the only time I have right now. That is okay. the problem. So tomorrow at 7.30, right? Yeah, 7.30. Let's see about the time what we can manage. But we will go at the same time. Just for tomorrow, it's a 7.30. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Yeah, All thank right. you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Welcome. All right, guys. Let's catch up tomorrow. Till then, keep practicing. Uh, down collab and coding, right? Do not waste your valuable time of 15 minutes so that you can manifest the things. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Take care.